The history of the United Nations as an international organization has its origins in World War II, since then its aims and activities have expanded to make it the archetypal international body in the early 21st century. Origins The earliest concrete plan for a new world organization to replace the ineffective League of Nations began under the aegis of the U.S. State Department in 1939. On 12 June 1941, representatives of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, the Union of South Africa, and of the exiled governments of Belgium, Czechoslovakia, Greece, Luxembourg, Netherlands, Norway, Poland, and Yugoslavia, as well as General de Gaulle of France, met in London and signed the Declaration of St. James's Palace. This was the first of six conferences that led up to the founding of the United Nations and the Charter of the United Nations, U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt first suggested using the name United Nations, to refer to the Allies of World War II, to British Prime Minister Winston Churchill during the latter's three-week visit to the White House in December 1941. Roosevelt suggested the name as an alternative to "...associated powers." A term the U.S. used in the First World War the U.S. was never formally a member of the Allies of World War I but entered the war in 1917 as a self-styled associated power." Churchill accepted the idea and cited Lord Byron's use of the phrase, "...United Nations," in the poem Child Harold's Pilgrimage, which referred to the Allies at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. <laughs> 1942. Declaration of United Nations The text of the Declaration of United Nations", was drafted by U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt, British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, and Roosevelt aide Harry Hopkins, while meeting at the White House on 29 December 1941. It incorporated Soviet suggestions, but left no role for France. The first official use of the term, "...United Nations." was on 1–2 January 1942 when 26 governments signed the declaration. One major change from the Atlantic Charter was the addition of a provision for religious freedom, which Stalin approved after Roosevelt insisted. By early 1945 it had been signed by 21 more states. A joint declaration by the United States of America, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, China, Australia, Belgium, Canada, Costa Rica, Cuba, Czechoslovakia, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Greece, Guatemala, Haiti, Honduras, India, Luxembourg, Netherlands, New Zealand, Nicaragua, Norway, Panama, Poland, South Africa, Yugoslavia. The government's signatory here too. Having subscribed to a common program of purposes and principles embodied in the joint declaration of the President of the United States of America and the Prime Minister of Great Britain dated August 14, 1941, known as the Atlantic Charter, being convinced that complete victory over their enemies is essential to defend life, liberty, independence and religious freedom, and to preserve human rights and justice in their own lands as well as in other lands, and that they are now engaged in a common struggle against savage and brutal forces seeking to subjugate the world, declare 1. Each government pledges itself to employ its full resources, military or economic, against those members of the tripartite pact and its adherents with which such government is at war. 2. Each government pledges itself to cooperate with the government's signatory hereto and not to make a separate armistice or peace with the enemies. The foregoing declaration may be adhered to by other nations which are, or which may be, rendering material assistance and contributions in the struggle for victory over Hitlerism. During the war, the United Nations became the official term for the Allies. To join countries had to sign the declaration and declare war on the Axis. Topic. Planning U.S. President Franklin D. Roosevelt considered his most important legacy the creation of the United Nations, making a permanent organization out of the wartime alliance of the same name. He the chief promoter of the United Nations idea. 
The first plans for the future international organization emerged in declarations signed at the wartime Allied conferences, the Moscow Conference and the Tehran Conference on 30 October 1943. Roosevelt had been a strong supporter of the League of Nations back in 1919–20, but was determined to avoid the mistakes Woodrow Wilson had made. The United Nations was FDR's highest post-war priority. He insisted on full coordination with the Republican leadership. He made sure that leading Republicans were on board, especially Senators Arthur Vandenberg of Michigan, and Warren Austin of Vermont. In a broad sense, Roosevelt believed that the UN could solve the minor problems and provide the chief mechanism to resolve any major issues that arose among the great powers, all of whom had a veto. For FDR creating the UN was the most important goal for the entire war effort. Roosevelt was especially interested in international protection of human right, and in this area his wife played a major role as well. The Allies had agreed to the basic structure of the new body at the Dumbarton Oaks Conference in 1944. At Yalta, Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin agreed to the establishment of the United Nations, as well as the structure of the United Nations Security Council. Stalin insisted on having a veto and FDR finally agreed. The participants at Yalta also agreed that the United Nations would convene for the first time in San Francisco in April 1945 in the United Nations Conference on International Organization. Roosevelt considered the United Nations to be his most important legacy. He provided continuous backstage political support at home and with Churchill and Stalin abroad. The Big Four of the United States, Britain, Soviet Union and China would make the major decisions, with France added later to provide permanent members of the all-powerful Security Council. Each had a veto power, thus avoiding the fatal weakness of the League of Nations, which had theoretically been able to order its members to act in defiance of their own parliaments. Roosevelt went public with strong advocacy in the 1944 presidential campaign, and turned detailed planning over to the State Department, where Sumner Wells and Secretary Cordell Hull worked on the project. It was his ideas that, four policemen, would collaborate to keep and enforce the peace. The United States, Britain, Soviet Union and China made the major decisions and became permanent members of the all-powerful Security Council. France was added to make five policemen. Stalin insisted on a veto power. Roosevelt finally agreed, thus avoiding the fatal weakness of the League of Nations, which theoretically could order its members to act in defiance of their own parliaments. From the 21st of September to the 7th of October 1944, representatives of the Republic of China, Britain, the U.S., and the USSR met to elaborate plans at the Dumbarton Oaks Conference in Washington D.C. Those and later talks produced proposals outlining the purposes of the United Nations organization, its membership and organs, as well as arrangements to maintain international national peace and security and international economic and social cooperation. Governments and private citizens worldwide discussed and debated these proposals. Winston Churchill urged Roosevelt to restore France to its status of a major power after the liberation of Paris in August 1944. At the Yalta Conference it was agreed that membership would be open to nations that had joined the Allies by 1 March 1945. Brazil, Syria and a number of other countries qualified for membership by declarations of war on either Germany or Japan in the first three months of 1945 in some cases retroactively. <laughs> Founding the United Nations <laughs> Establishment On 25 April 1945, the United Nations Conference on International Organization began in San Francisco. In addition to governments, a number of non-government organizations, including Rotary International and Lions Clubs International received invitations to assist in the drafting of a charter. After working for two months, the 50 nations represented at the conference signed the Charter of the United Nations on 26 June. Poland, which was unable to send a representative to the conference due to political instability, signed the charter on 15 October 1945. The charter stated that before it would come into effect, it must be ratified by the governments of the Republic of China, France, the USSR, the United Kingdom, and the United States, and by a majority of the other 46 signatories. 
This occurred on 24 October 1945, and the United Nations was officially formed. The date each founding member state deposited their ratification of the UN Charter is as follows USA, 8 August 1945, France, 31 August 1945, Dominican Rep. 4 September 1945, Nicaragua, 6 September 1945 New Zealand the 19th of September 1945 Brazil the 21st of September 1945 Argentina the 24th of September 1945 El Salvador the 26th of September 1945 Haiti the 27th of September 1945 China the 28th of September 1945 Turkey the 28th of September 1945 Denmark the 9th of October 1945 Chile the 11th of October 1945 Philippines the 11th of October 1945 Paraguay the 12th of October 1945 Cuba the 15th of October 1945 Lebanon the 15th of October 1945 Iran the 16th of October 1945 Luxembourg the 17th of October 1945 Saudi Arabia the 18th of October 1945 Czechoslovakia the 19th of October 1945 Syria the 19th of October 1945 Yugoslavia the 19th of October 1945 UK the 20th of October 1945 Egypt the 22nd of October 1945 Belarus the 24th of October 1945 Poland the 24th of October 1945 Ukraine the 24th of October 1945 USSR the 24th of October 1945 note the United Nations was established on this date Greece the 25th of October 1945 India the 30th of October 1945 Peru the 31st of October 1945 Australia the 1st of November 1945 Costa Rica the 2nd of November 1945 Liberia the 2nd of November 1945 Colombia the 5th of November 1945 Mexico the 7th of November 1945 South Africa the 7th of November 1945 Canada the 9th of November 1945 Ethiopia the 13th of November 1945 Panama the 13th of November 1945 Bolivia the 14th of November 1945 Venezuela the 15th of November 1945 Honduras the 17th of November 1945 Guatemala the 21st of November 1945 Norway the 27th of November 1945 Netherlands the 10th of December 1945 Uruguay the 18th of December 1945 Ecuador the 21st of December 1945 Iraq the 21st of December 1945 Belgium the 27th of December 1945 Nepal the 14th of December 1955 The first meeting of the General Assembly was held in Westminster Central Hall London on the 10th of January 1946 the Security Council met for the first time a week later in Church House, Westminster. The League of Nations formally dissolved itself on 18 April 1946 and transferred its mission to the United Nations. <laughs> Activities The United Nations has achieved considerable prominence in the social arena, fostering human rights, economic development, decolonization, health and education, for example, and interesting itself in refugees and trade. The leaders of the UN had high hopes that it would act to prevent conflicts between nations and make future wars impossible. Those hopes have obviously not fully come to pass. From about 1947 until 1991 the division of the world into hostile camps during the Cold War made agreement on peacekeeping matters extremely difficult. Following the end of the Cold War, renewed calls arose for the UN to become the agency for achieving world peace and cooperation, as several dozen active military conflicts continued to rage across the globe. 
The breakup of the Soviet Union has also left the United States in a unique position of global dominance, creating a variety of new problems for the UN see the United States and the United Nations. Facilities In June 1945, delegates from around the world gathered in San Francisco to draft the Charter for the United Nations. Potential sites for the UN headquarters included Vienna, Switzerland, Berlin, Quebec, and the Netherlands before the delegation decided on a headquarters in the United States by December 1945. Many U.S. cities vied for the honor of hosting the U.N. headquarters site, such as Marin County, California, St. Louis, Boston, Chicago, Fairfield County, C.T., Westchester County, New York, Flushing Meadows Corona Park in Queens, Tuscahoma, Oklahoma, the Black Hills of South Dakota, Belle Isle in Detroit, and a site on Navy Island straddling the U.S.-Canada border were considered as potential sites for the U.N. headquarters. San Francisco, where the UN headquarters delegation was held, was favored by Australia, New Zealand, China, and the Philippines due to the city's proximity to their countries. The UN and many of its delegates seriously considered Philadelphia for the headquarters. The city offered to donate land in several select sites, including Fairmount Park, Andorra, and a center city, Philadelphia location, which would have placed the headquarters along a mall extending from Independence Hall to Penn's Landing. In 1946, John D. Rockefeller III and Lawrence Rockefeller each offered their respective residences in Kaikuit in Mount Pleasant, New York, as headquarters for the UN, but the proposals were vetoed as the sites were too isolated from. Manhattan. The Soviet Union vetoed Boston due to the denunciations of Soviet expansion by John E. Swift, a Massachusetts judge and Supreme Knight of the Knights of Columbus. New York City Planning Commissioner Robert Moses convinced Nelson Rockefeller to purchase a 17 and 18 acres (6.9 and 7.3 hectares) piece of land along the East River in New York City from real estate developer William Zeckendorf Sr. The purchase was funded by Nelson's father, John D. Rockefeller Jr. The Rockefeller family owned the Tudor City Apartments across First Avenue from the Zeckendorf site. The UN ultimately chose the New York City site over Philadelphia after Rockefeller offered to donate the land along the East River. The UN headquarters officially opened on January 9, 1951, although construction was not formally completed until October 9, 1952. Structure and associated organizations The basic constitutional makeup of the United Nations has changed little, though vastly increased membership has altered the functioning of some elements. The UN as a whole has generated a rich assortment of non-governmental organizations and special bodies over the years, some with a regional focus, some specific to the various peacekeeping missions, and others of global scope and importance. Other bodies such as the International Labour Organization formed prior to the establishment of the United Nations and only subsequently became associated with it. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Milestones. In October 2015 over 350 landmarks in 60 countries were lit in blue to commemorate the 70th anniversary of the world body. See also Growth in United Nations membership List of members of the United Nations Security Council Timeline of UN peacekeeping missions List of UN Secretaries General Attacks on humanitarian workers Reform of the United Nations Topic Further reading Bear, Peter R., and Leon Gordenka the United Nations in the 1990s Street. Martin's Press, 1992 Bellamy, Alex J., and Paul D. Williams, eds. Providing Peacekeepers, The Politics, Challenges, and Future of United Nations Peacekeeping Contributions Oxford University Press, 2013 Bergeson, Helga Olay, and Leave Lund.
Dinosaurs or Dynamos, the United Nations and the World Bank at the turn of the century Routledge, 2013, Bosco, David L. 5 to rule them all, the UN Security Council and the making of the modern world Oxford University Press, 2009 Clark, Ian, and Christian Royce Smith, Liberal Internationalism, the practice of special responsibilities and evolving politics of the Security Council, International Politics 2013-50 No. 1 pp. 38-56. Dykeman, Class. On the Origins of the United Nations, When and How Did It Begin, Journal of International Organization Studies 3.1 79-84, online Ferdinand, Peter. Rising Powers at the UN, An Analysis of the Voting Behavior of BRICS in the General Assembly, Third World Quarterly 2014-35 No. 3 pp. 376-391. Hanhamaki, UCM The United Nations, A Very Short Introduction Oxford University Press, 2015. Hiscox, Richard. The Security Council, A Study in Adolescence Simon and Schuster, 1974 Luck, Edward C. UN Security Council, Practice and Promise Routledge, 2006 Mazoa, Mark, No Enchanted Palace, The End of Empire and the Ideological Origins of the United Nations Princeton UP, 2009, Meisler, Stanley. United Nations, The First Fifty Years 1995, Peters, Lawrence. The United Nations, History and Core Ideas Springer, 2016. Plesch, Dan. America, Hitler and the UN, How the Allies Won World War II and Forged a Peace. Bloomsbury Publishing, 2010, The Wartime Alliance called the United Nations Russell, Ruth B. A. History of the United Nations Charter, The Role of the United States, 1940-1945 Washington, Brookings Institution, 1958, O'Sullivan, Christopher D. The United Nations, A Concise History The Anvil Series, Krieger Publishing Company, 2005 Phillips, Walter Ray United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, Montana Law Review 24.1 2014, 2. Roberts, Adam, and Dominic Zahm. Selective Security, War and the United Nations Security Council Since 1945 Routledge, 2013 Saltford, John. The United Nations and the Indonesian Takeover of West Papua, 1962–1969, The Anatomy of Betrayal Routledge, 2013 Schlesinger, Stephen C. Act of Creation, The Founding of the United Nations, A Story of Superpowers, Secret Agents, Wartime Allies and Enemies, and Their Quest for a Peaceful World. Westview Press, 2003. Vreeland, James Raymond, and Axel Dreyer. The Political Economy of the United Nations Security Council, Money and Influence Cambridge University Press, 2014 Weiss, Thomas G. What's Wrong with the United Nations and How to Fix It John Wiley & Sons, 2013 Wuthnow, Joel. Chinese Diplomacy and the UN Security Council, Beyond the Veto Routledge, 2012 Topic. Primary sources Cordier, Andrew W., and Wilder Foot, eds. Public Papers of the Secretaries General of the United Nations, 4 volume, Columbia University Press, 2013.